It's I Do Notes episode 115. Welcome to the new studio as well as the HP Data Vault and Home Media Server. Welcome everyone. For this one, we're going to be taking a look at a new storage device. Well, actually, it's not too new on the market, but new to what we're going to be using here. We're going to walk through the setup and other things that do. It is the HP Data Vault that they uh, kindly sent down here. We're going to take a look at the HP Data Vault and see exactly how it fits on the network and what you need to configure it. We're going to be firing up the Windows instance first because you can't set it up on a Mac. So let's jump over to the setup and see what we get. Welcome everybody back. So we'll look at the live setup. This is the new HP uh, Data Vault. So as you can see, we got this installed and running. I've got the CD in now required Windows to do the first install. From there, you can actually jump over and install anywhere on a Macintosh or anything else you want. It's actually grabbing the software. It found it on the network. Uh, it already picked up which DHCP address it had on the network. There was nothing I had to configure once I put the CD in. It grabbed it, put it onto the Windows instance. It supports Windows 7, Vista, XP, Windows MCE, and Macintosh. It will actually install a few stray pieces if you don't have them. This is a VMware Fusion image running Windows XP, so there might be a few pieces that need to be installed. Uh, basically, we're going to walk through the installation process. It's actually going to do 2.0, as you can see, for .NET to get installed first. So we'll take a pause for that, and then we'll finish the rest of the setup. So .NET has been installed for 2.0, of course, as we'd imagine it would. Now we need to get the CD itself to install. So this is the install shield for the Data Vault 3.1. This is the 3.10 model of the Data Vault. It's pretty straightforward for the install. It's actually just going to run through its main components. There's really no choices that you have. This will be your management interface to get it set up the first time. After it's set up and running, you can use the web manager then to actually do a lot of the work that you need to do as well as install it onto other platforms as needed. So we're going to get the connector set up, it connects to the server, it can back it up. Uh, you can do all sorts of checks and things you want to do with backing up to this new data vault itself. I'm going to use it mainly as a media server soon, uh, more than I am for a backup facility. So we're going to configure it as such when we're finished. Now, do we want this computer to wake up to back it up? No, we're going to do backups if it's turned on. I'm actually going to turn off that facility when we're done. Like I said, I want to use this more as a home sharing system than I do as an actual backup system. Uh, everything in the house is pretty much going to be running. Well, I shouldn't say everything. A bunch of it's going to be Macintoshes. There's going to be a few other Windows servers in the house. Now we're going to customize the server. So let's walk through the settings. You can name it anything you want. As you see, 15 characters, no spaces. You can call it whatever you need. Um, I'm actually probably going to use this as a you know media storage more than anything. So I'm going to call it media storage. You'll need to set a password, at least seven characters. As you can see, you have to choose from three of the following sets. So I'm going to go ahead and do this step real quick with you. So after you set it, it's going to ask you about your staying up to date. Well, I like that it'll install updates only. You can manually configure it or you can automatically do them. Just keep in mind if you happen to be watching a movie or doing something at the time it needs to reboot or reset itself, it most definitely will. I'm going to go ahead and use the recommended settings for now to get it to go. And it's going to push the changes to the home server. So this is now going to go through depending on how you're connected on the network as well as everything else that's going on on the network at the time. But it'll push the settings and changes over to the home server. We'll get it ready to go and then we'll start configuring it for what we want to use it for. So the Windows Home Server is complete, so we'll go ahead and we'll click Start, and we'll jump in. It's going to ask you for the actual password that you just set up a few minutes ago, of course, which we'll get in there. So now that we're in, it's going to look for actual Data Vault updates. I'd, I'd hope it would have done this when we first came in, but we'll go ahead and let it run anyway. Browser, as you see. So there we are. Store it, secure it, and share it. So the Windows Home Server is in. You can start dealing with the computers and backups. You can do the accounts, start making the shared folders. Uh, we'll take a look at the system status. This 310 came with a terabyte built in of storage, um, already pre-built and ready to go. Uh, it'll show you all the utilization. As you can see, it's using a bunch of the space just for the OS level. Uh, there's really not much in the shared folders yet. It's using 20 gig for the system. It's just a little bit for the backups already go and the rest is free space is ready to go. Uh, you're seeing the CPU utilization across it's hyper threaded so that's a good point that's only using part of the cpu stuff 
Uh, you'll know if you're connected out for website connectivity, if anyone's in there for remote access and server add-ins are ready to go. So you can make this a server for iTunes, which I probably will end up doing. Uh, you can also add software to it, which a lot of people will do torrents and other bits of things to it as well. And then you can configure your servers for backups. So this is it. We'll talk about the rest of the setup later, but that is uh, the quick install for the Windows Home Server from HP. This is the 310 Data Vault. So that's the end of the setup of the basic parts. But here's a few things I did afterwards as I went in and actually did a remote desktop console to the Windows server side itself instead of using their web interface to actually go ahead and change and set the IP address to make it part of the home network, easier to get to, easier to map, easier to set for firewalls for outside access and things like that. Uh, I also went in and disabled or enabled some computers for certain backups as they needed to be, figuring that a bunch of them probably wouldn't need full backups all the time as that they were. I've had a few problems with a Samsung Smart Hub TV, getting it to actually see some of the file types from some movies I had, but that's the TV problem not the Windows Home Media. I also went to some of the gaming devices. I went to the Xbox 360. It saw it right away, played pretty much every single file format I had transferred over to it already. So I'll be moving things over. And the last bit I did, since it'll sit mainly inside the home network, I set it to guest access. So it'll be pretty much anonymous for anyone inside the home network so you can stream any of the content you want. It already made pre-done folders for uh, recorded TV, movies, videos, music, and it is an iTunes server as well. So I would definitely take a look at this HP Data Vault home server from Windows and see what you think. And I'll be adding a few more terabytes of storage soon.